know about you, but here at The Things, we really like Shark. That's why it makes us kind of sad that their numbers are in decline. We want to raise a bit of awareness, so we're telling you about what would happen if these giants of the seas disappeared. Stay watching to the end to check out some of the best-known sharks in popular culture. If you haven't visited The Things before, then please take a moment to give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Today we're going to show you that this is what happens if all sharks disappeared. The end of an era. If sharks disappeared from the planet, we would lose more than 400 million years of the species being in existence. To put it another way, there were sharks on Earth before there were trees. That's right, seems pretty unbelievable. But it's true. The first thing we could recognize as a tree, the Archaeopteris, first grew where the Sahara Desert is now, around 350 million years ago. Even then, it wouldn't have looked quite as much like the trees that we know today. That's because its leaves were different to current ones. They looked a lot like what we would now know as fern. The plant's name even means ancient fern in Latin. There was another big difference between Archaeopteris and the plants we know today. The prehistoric plant didn't reproduce by planting seeds, but instead it distributed spores. But at first glance, the Archaeopteris would definitely have been recognizable as a tree, even 350 million years ago. However, the first thing we could call a shark first appeared 400 million years ago. Again, though, these would not have been quite the same as the creatures that we know today. For instance, a lot of them would have had short, rounded heads, rather different to modern-day shark, and its tail would have been rather more symmetrical symmetrical to what we know now. However, it would have had jaws, replaceable teeth, tooth-like scales, and paired fins, which all define the shark. So who would want to lose so much natural history? Hey guys, we are so excited to announce we are producing our own original content. Head over to the Trendy for the best DIYs, fashion tips, makeup hacks, and so much more. We are sure you're going to love it. And be sure to let us know what you think in the comment section. We love to hear from you. See you there. Unbalancing the ecosystem. One of the things that everyone knows about sharks is that they are the supreme apex predators of the ocean. That means that while they eat other sea creatures, there's nothing in the water that eats them. This means they play a crucial role in the oceanic ecosystem. They help to remove the weak and sick creatures while they keep the balance with other species of shark to make sure there is diversity. Now we all know of the beauty and rarity of the coral reefs that exist in the ocean. When the sharks have been killed off, the reefs have declined. There's a reason why that is. It's because when there are no sharks, other predatory fish that sharks keep under control eat the herbivore fish. With fewer of them, macroalgae grows, meaning the coral can no longer compete with it. In turn, that means the microsystem that has grown up around the coral reef turns into one that supports macroalgae. That means that the coral reef slowly dies, and that's definitely bad. Why? Well, coral reefs are some of the most diverse natural habitats on planet Earth. Although they cover less than a tenth of 1% of the ocean's floor, they are home to around 25% of the world's marine wildlife. So imagine the devastation that would cause. Changing your menus. When sharks patrol the waters, what they eat is important. Their diet helps keep things in check and the diversity of life in balance. A decline in the number of sharks in one part of the world has had one specific kind of impact. In the North Atlantic, off the eastern coast of the United States, there has been a dwindling of the number of sharks. Because they've been dying off, one of their main sources of food, rays, have been increasing. One of the things that rays eat the most is the quahog, which is a type of clam. It's the clam that is a key ingredient in clam chowder, the iconic New England soup. This is something that is sold in hundreds of restaurants along the coast in states like Rhode Island, New Hampshire, Maine, and Massachusetts. People will take a trip to the seaside purely to have a delicious and tasty bowl of the stuff. However, if there are fewer of the bivalves, then that means that there will be less clam chowder made. So that means that restaurants are either having to raise their prices, or worse yet for gourmets, take the food off the menu. And that has another knock-on effect. With less clam chowder for sale, fewer and fewer day trippers and holiday makers are heading off to the coast. Farewell to scallops. The scallop is one of the more interesting kinds of shellfish around. Even if you don't know what a scallop is, you'll know what its shell looks like. It's the classic shell design, round with a straight bit at the bottom. Have you ever seen the logo of a shell gas station? It's that. But did you know that sharks help keep scallops alive? That's because they eat bull rays, which eat scallops. When the number of sharks in the North Atlantic Ocean declined back in 2007, that's what happened. The bull rays weren't stopped from eating the scallops, so the number of scallops collapsed. If you're a fan of seafood, you'll know that scallops are pretty delicious. They've got a nice texture, respond well to seasoning, and can even go together with meat to create a high-end kind of surf and turf meal. But the shells themselves sometimes have a higher meaning. In Europe in the Middle Ages, 
pilgrims would take the long and arduous journey to the shrine of Santiago de Compostela in northern Spain. As a sign that they had visited the holy site, people would wear a scallop shell. That is because of a legend that says St. James, whose relics are at the shrine, once rescued a knight who was covered in scallops, and the tradition continues to this day. Imagine if people were unable to carry on a medieval tradition. Global warming on the rise. Today, when we talk about what could happen if there were no more sharks, we will be talking about a comparatively small selection of the animals that are kept in the seas by them. But it isn't just the creatures in the sea that are protected by the ocean's apex predator. No, it's the entire planet itself. That's because sharks actually help defend against global warming. In 2016, Researchers from the Department of Life and Environmental Sciences at Bournemouth University in the United Kingdom discovered that overfishing of the seas, and especially the slaughter of sharks, was causing temperatures to rise. When sharks and other top predators are taken away from the marine ecosystem, that naturally leads to more and more of the creatures that they prey on. As a result, they give out more and more carbon dioxide, and because of that, temperatures can get dangerously hot, which affects all life on planet Earth. The study's co-author, Elizabeth Spears, said the study really identified sharks as a crucial part of the marine ecosystem, and not the frightening creatures that they are sometimes portrayed as. Dr. Rick Stafford, who led the research, said people needed to be more aware of the marine ecosystem and how it affects everyone and everything. The team said negative reports on shark attacks along with a lack of knowledge of the environment of the sea, led to limited public support for marine conservation. Economic Collapse As we will see today, the way in which sharks help maintain the balance of nature in the ocean is very useful. We can see them as a guard that prevents things getting too out of hand. It is thanks to the way sharks operate that we're able to take a lot of the fish that we like to eat and not worry about the ocean's stock of them getting depleted. That has to be a good thing, right? But it's not just about what we like to eat. Without the shark to help keep things good in the ocean, the sea stocks of fish would run out pretty quickly. And that wouldn't just mean that some of us would end up having to change our dietary habits. No, a lot of people would end up having no work at all. The United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization estimates that there are 38 million commercial fishermen and fish farmers across the world. Not only that, but there are 500 million people in the economically less developed world alone who depend in one way or another on fishing as their source of income, and the vast majority of those will be focused on fishing in the sea. So if all the sharks would disappear, the world's economy would go into absolute meltdown and utter chaos. Save the hammerhead. In our video today, we're looking at some of the types of animals that sharks help to conserve. However, we also think that there are some sharks that we'd really miss anyway if they weren't there anymore. One of those is one of the most distinctive and instantly recognizable creatures in the world's ocean. That's the hammerhead shark. Once you see it, you know exactly what it is. As you can probably guess, it's the shark whose head kind of looks like a hammer. Having said that, did you know that there's no such thing as a single species of hammerhead shark? That's because there are actually nine types of sharks that fit into that category. There's the bonnet head and the scalloped bonnet head, as well as the Carolina, scalloped, great, small eye, and smooth hammerhead. There's also the scoop head and the wing head sharks. These are all separate species. However, they all have the distinctive skull shape in common. The reason why they've evolved these is because it actually helps them to find their prey in the darkness of the ocean. That's because their sensory organs are spread out over a wider area. They've also got something unique called the ampullae of Lorenzini. These help them detect the electrical fields generated by some kinds of rays, which the hammerhead eat. Considering the rays often bury themselves in the sand, the ampullae are useful. And who would want to see such an interesting animal disappear from the earth? Goodbye to the minnows. If you think of a shark, we bet that you think of something that's gigantic and kind of intimidating. But not all sharks are massive giants of the deep. In fact, there are some sharks that might be smaller than the screen you're watching this video on right now. Did you know that the world's smallest species of shark is the dwarf lantern shark? The biggest that these can grow is just over 8 inches. It lives in the tropical Atlantic Ocean, just off the coasts of Venezuela and Colombia. And they aren't the most deadly creature, to put it mildly. Their main diet is krill, but there's something really cool about them. Because they live in the depths of the ocean, they're able to illuminate themselves so they can trap their prey. Lantern sharks are pretty common, but because they live at such low depths, they haven't been studied that much. Other species include the green lantern shark, which grows to 10 inches, and the African lantern shark, which grows to 11 inches. There's other small sharks too. These usually live low down, near the sea floor, 
with the pale cat shark only ever having been caught once. From this one catch, though, scientists were able to find out that it lays eggs, and it also measures around 8.5 inches. There may well be other species of tiny shark that we don't know about. Wouldn't it be a shame if they just disappeared? No more giants. The classical image of a shark is one of power, strength, grace, and size. These are the creatures that dominate the seas and reign as apex predators. Now, while the sheer diversity of sharks is such that there are plenty of smaller sharks, there's certainly some truth to the idea of the shark as an oceanic giant. The largest shark in the world today is the whale shark. This giant creature is also the largest kind of any fish on planet Earth. The biggest one studied measured 42 feet in length. For comparison, that's the size of a school bus. But despite being gigantic, the whale shark is a pretty peaceful kind of shark. It's a filter feeder, which means it eats fish naturally as it swims along, but it has a massive mouth, measuring around four feet in width, and it has more than 3,000 teeth, but it can't bite or chew. That definitely isn't true when it comes to the world's largest predatory shark, though. That's the legendary great white shark. This creature can grow up to 26 feet in length. They are extremely powerful swimmers and can reach speeds of up to 15 miles per hour, and their teeth are incredibly powerful. A great white shark can have as many as 300 of them in its mouth. So you can see, even the biggest sharks show remarkable diversity. Sharks in popular culture. Today we've been looking at what would happen if all the sharks in the world suddenly disappeared. But here's a question for you. What would happen if 400 million years ago, sharks had never even evolved? That sounds a little bit far-fetched. They've managed to survive four gigantic extinction events after all. But bear with us. Think of all the different strands of popular culture that you would never have experienced. One of the most famous sharks in all of pop culture is, of course, the eponymous man-eater in Jaws. This thrilling film, released in 1976, was the movie that pretty much instantly catapulted Steven Spielberg into the top leagues of movie directors. And despite the shark being far more dangerous than any real-world equivalent could be, it certainly generated an interest in a generation. Indeed, the tales of deadly sharks ended up becoming a cliché, but the shark in Jaws is one we look at fondly. A friendlier shark is the one in Finding Nemo. He's called Bruce, which is also the name people who worked on Jaws called their mechanical shark. He doesn't want to eat the main characters of that Disney classic, telling them, fish are friends, not food, which became one of the naughty's oddest catchphrases. We could go on and on, but we think it would be a shame if these characters had never crossed our consciousness. That's all for This Is What Happens If All Sharks Disappeared. If you liked it, then you should check out 20 Chinese knockoffs that are actually better than the original. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.